The Senate will come to order. The senators will please take their seats. Those persons not entitled to the privilege of the floor will please retire to the gallery. The senators and all in attendance will stand and be led in prayer by Amarjeet Singh Riot, Sikh Foundation of Virginia, Fairfax Station, Virginia. Uh, following the prayer, everyone will remain standing and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America by Eller Bollington. Come on, Eller. This is Sikh Convocation. Ekunkar, Satanam Karta Purkhnir Bhavanir Vaya, Kala, Kalmur, Tajunni Sahib, Guru Prasad, Jap, Aadsa, Juga Sach, Hai Sach, Nanak Ho Sivi Sach. There is one God, the eternal, all-pervading and everlasting, fearless, without enmity, never incarnated, present throughout creation, self-existent and enlightened, mediate on the name of Lord God, who was true in beginning, true in the primal age, true now and true always. O oh dear God Almighty, give us to realize the truth about our existence, our real self, the God within the ultimate reality, so that we may attain an eternal state of bliss. God, show us the light so that we may believe in universal brotherhood, truthful living and honest and hard work. Give us strength to build our character so that we may bear malice towards none and share our blessings with others. Almighty God, open up our hearts and our minds so that we always discern your will for this commonwealth and our, for our nation. Please grant us wisdom and courage and inspire us with the vision so that Americans of all faith and colors continue to be forced for hope and freedom throughout the world. Dear God, may your grace and presence be with the members of the Senate as they fulfill their duties of their office and serve you by serving the people of the Virginia and this nation, set these elected representatives free to speak the truth owned by study and prayer to dis discern what is right and to be distinguished for their integrity. May their decisions promote peace, love, harmony, and universal brotherhood and preserve your blessedness, beautiful uh, creations on this earth. O oh God, bring us into fellowship of men and women in whose company we may always remember the name. Dear God, bless everyone and may everyone prosper under your light. Vai Guruji ka khalsa, Vai Guruji ki fateh. Our pure souls belong to you. May you forever be victorious. Thank you. Amen. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will call the roll. All those in attendance will please record their vote aye. Clerk will close the roll. You have a quorum, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. Senate Journal for Friday, January 31st, 2020. Senator from Williamsburg, Senator Mason moves that the reading of the journal be waived. All in favor of waiving the reading of the journal will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk, close the roll. Ayes 36, noes 3. Ayes 36, noes 3. The reading of the journal is waived. The clerk will report any communication from the House of Delegates. Senior Senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the reading of the communication from the House of Delegates be waived? All in favor of waiving the reading will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the Senators ready to vote? Have all the Senators voted? Do any Senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 36, noes 4. Ayes 36, noes 4. The reading of the communication from the House of Delegates is waived. The clerk will report any communication from the governor. We do not have any, sir. Thank you, Madam Clerk.
Mm -mm. No, you're good. Uh, now comes a time in the morning hour where we have the privilege uh, and the pleasure of welcoming our distinguished guests with us here in the Senate gallery. Uh, I will give my usual reminder that the way this will proceed is that a senator will stand up and recognize an individual or group. Uh, I will then offer the warm welcome of the Senate, and at the very end, uh, we will all applaud together. Uh, and I'd like to begin by calling on the senator from Southern Fairfax, Senator Barker. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, rise for an introduction. Senator, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. President, um, in the gallery now is the uh, leader of uh, one of the, the, the uh, Sikh Foundation of Virginia, uh, which is in uh, right off 120, right along 123 in Fairfax Station, Virginia, in my district. Um, he's here with an, a number of other people from uh, the the, uh, the Sikh temple there, uh, and. Uh, that was did a, an excellent job, obviously, in, in his opening prayer here in the in the, uh, in the session today. Uh, so I would hope that you would give the warm welcome of the Senate to Amit, Amir Singh Riyat from the Sikh Foundation of Virginia, and to all the others who were with him there. I was with them last uh, on a Sunday last summer, and let me tell you, it is a a uh, energetic, uh, thriving place. So <laughs> I thank the senator. Would Amarjeet Singh Riot and all of our friends from the Sikh Foundation of Virginia in the gallery please rise if you are able. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. Thank you for that very beautiful and moving prayer. I believe this was your first time giving it in the Senate, but uh, certainly not your last. And we are grateful for your words of inspiration. We're grateful to the Sikh Foundation of Virginia for your tremendous moral leadership here in the Commonwealth. And uh, you're welcome back here anytime. I would ask everyone to please join me in extending the warmest welcome of the Senate to our distinguished guests. Senator from Western Fairfax, Senator Marsden. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise for an introduction. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. With us in the uh, gallery today are the VCU Best Program students and teachers. This is a group of folks making a difference in our Commonwealth and their environmental communities along the James River. As part of a three-year NOAA Bay Watershed Education and Training Grant competitively awarded to VCU, over 3,300 students from Charles City County Public Schools, Colonial Heights, New Kent County, Newport News, will be exploring the role of mussels and oysters play in sustaining our James River ecosystems. Led by the VCU School of Education, Education, the VCU Rice River Center and the VCU Center for Environmental Studies. Middle school teachers from each of these school systems are gaining experience in leading edge research from VCU environmental scientists. Please help me recognize these students and their teachers who are making a real difference in their communities along the James River. We appreciate your efforts and that of VCU to help shepherd these types of transformative STEM learning experiences for our underserved students across the Commonwealth. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Senator. Would our young leaders from VCU Best in the gallery please rise if you are able. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. Thank you for the tremendous work you do uh, to protect our environment, such an important natural resource, the James River. Thank you to our young people. Uh, this is the planet that you will inherit, and so we're grateful for your leadership uh, and all that you do to make the Commonwealth of Virginia a better place for us all. Uh, I would ask everybody to please join me and send the warmest welcome of the Senate to our leaders from VCU Best. Senator from Falk here, Senator Vogel. Good morning, Mr. President. I rise for purposes of an introduction. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to direct your attention in the gallery to a dis distinguished guest who traveled here this morning for the presentation of a bill. Um, his name is Danny Davis, and he is the town administrator for the town, the beautiful town of Middleburg, Virginia. Um, and Danny Davis showed up this morning and waited in local government for hours for his very important town charter amendment bill to be heard. And um, I was waylaid at my law office because I was trying to go to work this morning. And um, I have to extend my deepest apologies because he carried that heavy load himself um, with Dr. Donovan, uh, the gentle lady from Henrico, who carried the rest of that load. And I have to say, Mr. President, I know... I tried to go to work this morning, and that didn't work. Dr. Donovan can deliver babies and still come to work. So um, I both want you to extend the very warm welcome of the Senate to Danny Davis, who is our town administrator, and um, also say that he got a twofer. He got uh, the support of more than one legislator this morning on his legislation. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the senator. 
with our friend Administrator Danny Davis and any guests with you, please rise in the gallery if you're able. Uh, Danny, thank you so much uh, for your leadership in Middleburg and also for being here in the Capitol. Uh, we appreciate so much having wonderful leaders come and uh, improving our Commonwealth in so many different ways. And I echo the eloquent, generous words of uh, your senator from Fauquier, Senator Vogel, and I know Senator Dunneman also uh, is very appreciative of your work. So uh, you, of course, are welcome back here anytime. Middleburg is a gorgeous place. And I would ask everybody to please join me to extend the warmest welcome of the Senate to Administrator Danny Davis. the senior senator from Richmond City, Senator McClellan. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise for an introduction. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Joining us in the gallery today, we have members and advocates from the Virginia Young Democrats, which is the affiliate organization for uh, anyone under 36 uh, affiliated with the Democratic Party. Some of us uh, in this chamber, including the senator from Prince William and myself, uh, got our start there. Um, and so hopefully we have some of our future members, and I ask that you give them a warm Senate welcome. I thank the senator. Would our leaders from the Virginia Young Democrats in the gallery please rise if you are able. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you for the tremendous work that you all do uh, throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia to improve our democracy and our legislative process. We are very uh, grateful for your leadership and for your work, which is year-round. Uh, I know the uh, senior senator from Richmond City, Senator McClellan, I echo her uh, very generous and eloquent words, and uh, you're appreciated by everybody here for the work that you do. So you're welcome back here anytime, and I would ask everyone to please join me in extending the warmest welcome of the Senate to our leaders from the Virginia Young Democrats. Senator from Lynchburg, Senator Peake. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Today, uh, we have visiting us from all over the world students who are participating in the ASSE International Student Exchange Program. I had about 30 of them in my office. It's a little crowded this morning. We have a large number of them up in the gallery. Um, the the ASSE students have been awarded prestigious scholarships based on their leadership skills, their way above average scholastic achievements, and their English skills. They are selected through a highly competitive merit-based process. Thousands apply, and those selected have gone through a vigorous, comprehensive process. All ASSE international students come here to learn about our country and cultures and share their own cultures with us. Thanks to the many host families, schools, and governments that have accepted these students, we are, and, uh, we are able to uh, strengthen our ties with other nations through these future leaders. I ask you to give them the warm welcome of the Senate. I thank the Senator. Would our friends from the ASSE, International Student Exchange Program, in the gallery please rise if you are able. Thank you all so much for joining us here today in the Capitol and the Senate of Virginia. We are grateful uh, to every single one of you, to your host families, uh, to your sponsoring governments. We appreciate you being here in the birthplace of Western democracy. Uh, and so I hope that you enjoy your time here. We all greet you and send back our warmest uh, thoughts uh, to each of you as you travel back uh, home. And uh, so please do come back and visit us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the Capitol many more times to come. I would ask everyone to please join me and extend the warmest welcome of the Senate to our leaders from the ASSE International Student Exchange Program. Senator from Franklin County, Senator Stanley. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise for the purposes of two introductions. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. First, I'd like to welcome and have you extend the warm welcome of the Senate to a group of people uh, from Halifax who work so very hard to make sure that our children in our part of the state down there in Halifax have a high quality education to prepare them uh, for their futures and to give them the greatest chance of achieving the American dream. Uh, Mr. President, today we have the Halifax County School Board members and the Halifax County Public Schools representatives joining us in the gallery, and I would ask that you extend to them a warm welcome of the Senate. I thank the Senator. Would our leaders from the Halifax County School Board and School Board Public School representatives please rise in the gallery if you are able. 
thank you all so much for being here today. We are so grateful uh, for your leadership and all that you do in Halifax County to give our young people and families hope and economic opportunity uh, and a chance, as Senator Sanders said, at, at the American dream. It really does start uh, with the work you all do every single day. So we appreciate you. Please send our best to the beautiful folks in Halifax. And I would ask everybody to please join me in extending the warmest welcome of the Senate to our distinguished guests. Senator from Franklin County, Senator Stanley. Thank you, Mr. President. Now I have uh, the honor of introducing a group from my area in the Martinsville-Henry County chapter. I met them years ago. They came to my office, and it started out perhaps as a friendly protest, but it ended up I invited them into my conference room, and we had a wonderful time uh, and a wonderful exchange talking about issues that matter to them most. Ever since then, uh, I welcome them uh, in my home office uh, about every year, and this year they had set an appointment to meet with me, and I was down in, in Senate courts dealing with Senator Morrissey and Senator Surville, Bill, bills and uh, lots of bills, and so I could not meet with them. But because they are so persistent, uh, they came down and found me, and we had a lovely discussion, although abbreviated, not like we usually like to have. But, Mr. President, um, the people from Virginia Organizing, from my area, Virginia Organizing is celebrating its 25 years in Virginia uh, in doing efforts and making sure that, that we are, they are bringing to us and to our attention issues that matter to them most and the people that they serve. In fact, one of the issues that they are really uh, uh, near and dear to their hearts right now, Mr. President, is the constitutional amendment this year, which will come up for redistricting reform. And, uh, and so I hope everybody on both sides of the aisle understands that Virginia Organizing has exactly right. We need to pass a constitutional amendment uh, for redistricting reform, and because of that and every other thing. But I, I must say, Mr. President, we may be on opposite sides of issues, but we're not on opposite sides of issues when it comes to our local area and their needs. And also, you can be on opposite sides of issues and still be friends. And there are my friends right up there, Mr. President. If you would extend to them the warm welcome of the Senate, I'd certainly appreciate it. I thank the senator. Would our friends and leaders from the Martinsville-Henry County chapter of Virginia Organizing please rise in the gallery if you are able. Thank you all so much for joining us here today, and thank you for the work you do every single day uh, to strengthen our democracy. It really only functions well if we have an engaged citizenry and people who are willing to give up their time uh, to improve the Commonwealth for, for all of us. So uh, we are grateful to you. Please send our warmest back. Uh, to the folks back home, and uh, you're welcome uh, to protest Senator Stanley anytime you want to. Uh, and by the way, that goes for everybody here. So uh, I would ask everybody to please join me to extend the warmest welcome of the Senate to our distinguished guests. Do any other senators wish to be recognized for purposes of an introduction? Is there any other business to come in the morning hour? Seeing none, the clerk will call the calendar. Senate calendar for Monday, February 3rd, 2020. Uncontested calendar, Senate bills on third reading. Senior Senator from Fairfax, Senator Saslaw. Mr. President, I move that the Senate bills on third reading on the uncontested calendar, pages 1 through 6, that's Senate Bill 528 through uh, Senate Bill 1012, be placed on their final passage in a block. Any senator desiring to remove a bill from the block, please do so after the clerk has read the number of the bill. Thank the Senator. Question is, shall the Senate bills on the uncontested calendar, third reading, pages 1 through 6, Senate Bill 528 through Senate Bill 1012, be placed upon their final passage in the block with the understanding that any Senator desiring a bill be removed from the block will do so after the clerk has read the number of the bill. All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. The bills are before us in the block. Clerk will read the number of the bills. Senate Bill 528, Senate Bill 168, Senate Bill 200, Senate Bill 338, Senate Bill 458, Senate Bill 500, Senate Bill 555, Senate Bill 580, Senate Bill 591, Senate Bill 681, Senate Bill 786, Senate Bill 843, Senate Bill 1012. Question is, shall the bills in the block pass? All in favor of the passage of the bills will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? <clears throat> Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. The bills in the block pass. 
Regular calendar, Senate bills on third reading. Senate Bill 869, a bill relating to notice by localities. We have a floor substitute. The senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Staff. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, can that go by for temporarily? Thank you. Without objection, Senate Bill 869 will go by temporarily. Senate Bill 246. A bill relating to Department of Motor Vehicle sex designation. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Surville. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first, I'm happy to note I made my soccer game. My daughter scored a goal, but could this go by for the day again? <laughs> Without objection, Senate Bill 246 will go by for the day. Senate Bill 480, a bill relating to covenants not to compete, low-wage employees, civil penalty. We have a floor amendment. The senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator DeStaff. Mr. President, can we reconsider the vote on which the bill was ordered to be engrossed in advance to its third reading? Question is, shall the vote by which the bill was ordered engrossed in advance to its third reading be reconsidered? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk, close the roll. Ayes 39, no zero. Ayes 39, no zero. The motion is agreed to. The senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Staff. Mr. President, from, I yield to the senator. Oh, Mr. President. Thanks, Senator. Senator from Fairfax City, Senator Peterson. Mr. President, I uh, move, the, move to waive the reading of the floor amendment. And senator, the question is, shall the reading of the floor amendment be waived? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The reading of the floor amendment is waived. Senator from Fairfax City, Senator Peterson. President, uh, first of all, I want to thank the uh, Virginia Beach. Uh, basically, this just puts a, a, uh, a cause of action with attorney's fees and costs recoverable in the bill, so people will have an a, uh, incentive to bring these claims. And I move that we agree to the floor uh, amendment. Thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding the floor amendment? Mr. President, speaking senator to senator the floor amendment. Beach, senator Dista. Um, I thank the good senator for bringing this floor amendment up because I think this makes the bill much better and solves a little problem we have with who actually pays for it. So with that, I'd like to make sure we vote yes on this floor amendment. Thank you. Thank the senator. Question is, shall the floor amendment be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The floor amendment is adopted. Senior senator from Virginia B. Senator D. Staff. Mr. President, I'd like to engross and advance this to his third reading. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed in advance to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed in advance to its third reading. Senior Senator from Virginia Beach, Senator DeStaff. Mr. President, I'd like to suspend the rules and dispense with the third constitutional reading. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the rules be suspended and the third constitutional reading be dispensed with? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk, close the roll. Ayes 39, no's 1. Ayes 39, no's 1. The rules are suspended, and the third constitutional reading is dispensed with. Mr. President, I move the passage of this fine bill. Thank you, Senator. The, do you want to speak to it? Mr. President, speaking to the bill. Senator's the floor. So, Mr. President, what this bill does, it's the same thing that was brought up by... Um, the former senator, the former senior senator from Virginia Beach, um, it takes and ensures that low wage employees are not boxed in um, and kept to the same job forever and ever and ever with a non compete. So, what this does is it really allows freedom for our low wage employees. With that, I move the bill pass. Thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 480? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 480 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 34, no 6. Ayes 34, no 6. Senate Bill 480 passes. Senate Bill 1, a bill relating to suspension of driver's license for non-payment of fines or cost. 
Senator from Franklin County, Senator Stanley. Thank you, Mr. President. I now move that Senate Bill 1 pass in speaking to the measure. Senator, has the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the, of the Senate. Four years, <clears throat> four years I've been fighting this bill to get it passed, to stop the arcane practice of suspending someone's driving, a driver's license, not because of their driving behavior, but because of their inability to pay a fine or being late in that payment of the fine to the clerk's office. We had created for ourselves a debtor's prison. It was arcane, and it hurt families, and especially those in my area and those at low-income areas, uh, because basically it took away what was maybe a privilege in order to obtain it, but once possessed, a driver's license is property. And the Supreme Court of the United States has recognized that a driver's license is property. And this property by Virginia was being taken away from people without the due process of law. And not only is that unconstitutional, it's just plain wrong and un-American. So what we have here is this will actually restore the faith of the people and restore their driver's license, bring back the dignity that this government has taken away from them because they could not pay a fine. We have put that in the budget amendment this past overwhelmingly this last year. And what we saw, all up, members across the hall were saying that the sky was going to fall, that we weren't going to collect any debts anymore, the fines would go unpaid, it was going to create mass chaos. Well, it didn't. It immediately restored over 40,000 Virginians' licenses that had been suspended. The fines and court fees kept getting paid. And people were trying to make a way and so that they could get their dignity back and their job back so they could pay these court costs and fines. But, Mr. President, more importantly, perhaps most importantly, because I saw it every day in the courtrooms that I practiced in, where people were coming in on driving on suspended one, two, and three offense based on them trying to get to work, but they had lost their license for fees that they could not pay, and now the fee cap was insurmountable. But what we saw was, is we have seen less, uh, we have seen now 5,000 people reduction of those charges being brought into court and jamming up our court systems. So it's not only helped restore dignity to those that have lost their license for non-payment of fees, but it's also restoring uh, some normalcy to our court system. Mr. President, this is one of the most important bills, and that's why I stayed up late with Richard Krause uh, at a kitchen table, making sure that we put Senate Bill 1 on it, and so that Adam Eben, Senator Eben, would not have Senate Bill 1 like he usually does, because it's that important. And Mr. President, I would also state to this body that this has an emergency clause in it. Because this is so critical that we have stuck an emergency clause, so once we pass it here, it goes to the House and the governor signs it, it becomes law automatically. So for those reasons, Mr. President, I now renew my motion that Senate Bill 1 pass. Thank the Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 1? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 1 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. Senate Bill 1 passes. Senate Bill 72. A bill relating to public defender offices, cities of Manassas and Manassas Park, and the county of Prince William. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Servell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill passed and speaking to the motion. Senator, is the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, this bill simply adds Prince William County, the cities of Manassas, Manassas Park, to the localities that will have a public defender's office. Currently, there's about 24 in the state. This makes the 25th and the first new office since, I think, 2004. The... Uh, uh, Prince William County now has it's the second largest jurisdiction in the state, and um, this would be an office of about 25 lawyers, about 10 support staff, be one of the biggest public defender's offices in the state. It's supported by not only a large grassroots coalition in Prince William County, of which there's a few up in the gallery watching us right now. It's also supported by the uh, newly elected Prince William County Board of Supervisors, which has pledged to supplement their salaries. Uh, and, uh, Mr. President, having said that, I think this will prove the quality of justice in Prince William County, and I would uh, move the bill pass again. Thank you, Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 72? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 72 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 33, no 7. Ayes 33, no 7. Senate Bill 72 passes. Senate Bill 110. 
a bill relating to research and development tax credits re relating to research and development tax credit sunset aggregate caps. Senator from Northern Fairfax, Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill pass and speaking to it. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. A few years ago, we passed two um, R&D tax credits. One was the small innovator tax credit, and the other was the major innovator tax credit. Once we did this, a number of other states copied us and outdid us because it was such a good uh, tool for economic development. So what this bill does is um, try to adjust so it's all oversubscribed. We have more people wanting to use this tax credit than we could possibly do with the monies we have. So this increases uh, the small tax credit cap from seven million to eight point four million, and the major innovator uh, R and D tax credit from twenty million to twenty four million. In other words, twenty percent. Um, it also adjusts the sunset date and changes the a annual filing deadline for the credits to align with um, the federal R&D tax credit. That's what that is. Thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 110? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 110 pass? All in favor, the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk, close the roll. Ayes 39, noes 1. Ayes 39, noes 1. Senate Bill 110 passes. Senate Bill 231. A bill relating to sales and use tax exemption for menstrual supplies. Senator from Northwestern Fairfax. Senator Boisco. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill pass. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Speak speaking, to the bill. speaking to the Senator bill, has the floor. this is the Dignity Act, which would um, remove the sales tax on menstrual products. We passed this through the body uh, last year with bipartisan support. Um, we had to do a compromise with the House last year to get their support. I'm bringing it back in the same form that we had it this year. It does have a clause and an enactment period that is um, a year ahead. So it would not go into effect until 2021. And I move the bill pass. Thank the Senator. Do any other Senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 231? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 231 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the Senators ready to vote? Have all the Senators voted? Do any Senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. Senate Bill 231 passes. Senate Bill 335, a bill relating to hunting and fishing license military service. Senator from King George, Senator Stewart. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill pass in speaking to that. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. Um, Mr. President, this bill simply gives a, a uh, discounted license for um, veterans or those that have served in the military, uh, and I'd ask you to support the bill. Thank the Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 335? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 335 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk, close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. Senate Bill 335 passes. Senate Bill 624. A bill relating to conditional release of geriatric prisoners. Senator from Northern Chesapeake, Senator Spruill. Thank you, Mr. President. Speaking to the bill. Senator has the floor. Uh, Mr. President, Member 624, bill states any person serving a sentence imposed upon a conviction for a felony offense other than a first class one, other than a class one felony. This bill would expand eligibility criteria for geriatric condition released to include individuals who are 50 years old and have served at least 20 years, 55 years old who have served 15 years. Currently, offenders who are 65 years of age or older 
who have served five years and are 60 years age or older have served 10 years. j recently published a report on the rising cost of inmates' health and care among the aging population. j percentage estimate the age of 55 or more than double in the last 10 years. Since 2017, inmates rose over the age of 55 has a count for 12% of the population uh, who are incarcerated. This bill will allow costly, this bill will allow the most cost and sick offenders to be considered, only to be considered by the Virginia Board of Parole that they will be released. It was the physical impact sent to uh, the finance department and they passed it out. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Senator, want to move passage? Uh, thank you, sir. Move the bill passed. Thank you. I thank the Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard? Um, what person from Roanoke County, Senator Suterline, rise? Thank you, Mr. President. Will the patron yield for a question? Will Senator yield? Yes. Senator yields. You have the floor. Is there any other situation where we consider people at 50 years old geriatric? <laughs> Senator has the floor. <laughs> Mr. President, I, I do not know. <laughs> Further question? That just seemed pretty young to me, uh, Mr. President. So I was curious to how how 50 years old is now considered geriatric. Mr. President, we're talking about those who are, are really sick. We're not talking about because you're 50 years old. I mean, of course, you got some 60s old who are healthy. We're talking about those who are really sick, that incapacitated, that really, that they can consider, that they could consider uh, giving them parole. Further question? Uh, Mr. President, it, it just seems I seem to read this a little bit differently. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Senator. What part Senator from Rockingham? Senator Obenshade, rise. Mr. President, I reluctantly rise for question. Um, Senator Yield for a question? Yes, sir. Senator Yield, you have the floor. Could you point me to the portion of this bill that uh, says that you have to be sick in addition to being old? Senator, it's the floor. Mr. Chairman. Because, Mr. President, I do not see it. The gentleman uh, from Mr. Chesapeake Mr. President, uh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm reading uh, he could, but you're right, I do not see that in there. Okay. With the, uh, uh, Senator Yale, the, the senator junior senator from Richmond yes. City. Yes. Ju junior senator from Richmond City. Senator Morrison. In response to the inquiry, I tell the gentleman that this was a, a, a very lively debate in committee. There is no language in there dealing with the words sick or incapacitated. However, the dialogue and the debate during committee meetings and among the various stakeholders was that that portion of the population uh, that reached anywhere from 50 to 65, the statistics showed were very sick or were more sick, more in need of services than any other population in DOC and were costing the Commonwealth where it normally costs $21,000 a year to incarcerate somebody upwards of 40 or $60,000 per person. So so, further question? Mr. President, uh, I guess further question is, so I guess the answer to that question is that this bill is not as described. It is uh, an absolute uh, geriatric release provision for prisoners over 50 or 55, and it has nothing to do with illness. Sir, the floor. Mike, can you all hear? Is your Mr. mic on? Mr. President. Mr. President. Oh, hold, on one, hold on one second. You good? Okay. Four person from Eastern um, Fairfax, Senator Servell Rise. Do you yield? To answer to his question. Sure. You have, you have the floor. Um, what I would say to the <clears throat> Senator from Rockingham is it's not an absolute release. It simply makes people eligible for parole, which requires a hearing and a proceeding. And I believe about 3% of the people who are eligible are actually getting released. So it's a very small... Um, possibility. Just, it just makes people eligible. And I would also just note that th these prisoners have to serve a portion of their sentence, differing lengths of sentence based on their age um, before they're eligible. So it's not just an automatic release. 
So, Mr. President, Senator, further question. Further question. So, to whoever wants to answer it. Uh, so, am I correct in understanding that this would apply to someone who's convicted at age 40? They would be eligible for release at age 55. Senator from Eastern Fairfax. Mr. President, what I would say to the gentleman is if he looks at lines um, 50 through 51, if in, it depends on their sentence, but if they're convicted at 40, if they hit age 50, they would not be eligible because they hadn't served Five. 20 years yet. If they get 55, they they wouldn't be they would be eligible if at 55 if they've served 15 years in prison and it they. Mr. President, question. and that 15 years in prison would be irrespective of the amount of time that they were sentenced for. They may have been sentenced to serve 30 years after that, or 40 years, or 50 years. After that first 15 years, they would be eligible for release. Senator, it's the floor. And I'll yield. And, um, but what I would say is that Provided it was not the type of sentence that was life without parole, yes, they'd be eligible for parole to be part of that 3% that gets parole. So, Mr. President, for the question. question. So, I assume, and you can please disabuse me of this assumption if I'm wrong, that uh, the juries who would be sentencing these people at age 40 would not be informed that the person's going to be eligible for release at age 55. Senator, is the floor? Um, I, would say, I would yield. And then I would say to the gentleman, yes, I believe he's correct about that. Further question? I thank the gentleman. <laughs> thank the Senator. For what purpose is the junior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator Kiggins, rise? Mr. President, I rise to speak to the bill. Senator, it's the floor. I, uh, I just wanted to point out I find the language of the bill to be a little bit misleading as far as the definition of geriatric is concerned. In the medical field, geriatric is defined as age 65 and above. And with aging of America and Americans living longer and healthier lives well into their 70s and 80s, I find the term geriatric at age 50 to be extremely misleading. And then... Uh, just also contributing with the cost of housing prisoners uh, being more expensive at that age, I would I would argue that that's probably incorrect information. Just with um, again people living uh, very active, healthy uh, lives well into their even 80s, 90s, and above these days. So, thank you. Thank you, Senator. For what purpose, is Senator from Arlington, Senator Favola, rise. I'm speaking to the bill, Senator. Mr. Is the President. floor. Thank you. Um, colleagues in the Senate, I would ask that you support this bill for several reasons. When we heard the bill before um, rehab and social services, the members of the administration and actually uh, individuals who had served on the parole board came forward and were very clear about saying this would be considered uh, a guideline or a marker, if you will. Maybe that's a better word since it would be in statute. But regulations still have to be promulgated and more than just the age would be addressed in those regulations. Um, and, you know, including health status, uh, severity of the crime, behavior of the prisoner while the prisoner was uh, incarcerated, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, uh, this is a marker, and I wouldn't, I think it, it would be uh, a mistake to read it as a uh, complete and total standalone. Uh, criteria, and I just wanted to make that point. And the other point I would make is it was uh, very clear to the committee that there would have to be some plan if a prisoner were to be released on parole. Uh, housing would have to be provided in some other venue. There would have to be some place to release that prisoner to. So um, that's an important point when you're talking about the application of this and I, I do think it's something that we should give the parole board authority to move forward with, and I hope you would agree. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Thank the Senator. For what purpose is the Senator from Fairfax City? Senator Peterson, rise. Thank you, Mr. President. Speak to the bill. Senator, is the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I'd like to say I turned 50 a few months ago, and I feel terrible, so uh, <laughs> if that's any consolation. Um, 
This is not a new concept. A lot of these questions we had in courts committee, in fact, I asked some of them, but the bottom line is we've had this on our, in, our, in the code for a while that once you reach a certain age, you're eligible for what they call geriatric release. Now, is geriatric being 60 or 65? I have no clue. But the bottom line is we've already come to the basically the moral assessment that once people reach the back half of their lives or the back quarter of their lives, we are more likely to release them back to their families because, quite frankly, it's expensive to keep them. What this bill did was just walk that back a few years, but noticeably it also walked forward the amount of years they have to serve. So basically you can release somebody at 55, but they have to serve 15 years as opposed to they, you can release them at 60, but they had to release, they had to serve at least 10 years. You can also release them at 50, but they had to re, uh, serve at least 20 years. So on the one hand, we're moving the age downward, but we're moving the length of term upwards. So, you know, in a way, it, it broadens the scope. In a way, it, it also significantly lessens the scope about who this could even apply to. I think the real issue is, again, we're just allowing people to petition for this. As to whether or not they'll get uh, uh, accepted or whether or not their application will be approved, that'll be up to the parole board. Uh, but the bottom line is I just want to be clear that we made this choice years ago uh, for geriatric release for just the reasons that have been articulated earlier, that at some point it's uh, – both more humane and also cheaper to let them live with their families. Thank you. Thank the Senator. For what purpose is the senior senator from Chesapeake? Senator Cosgrove, rise. Uh, speak to the bill, Mr. President. Senator, has the floor. <clears throat> Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I, I know this is established policy, but I, I, I got to tell you what we're dealing with here. All right. And I hate speaking against Senator Spruill's bill because he's like one of my best friends, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I will tell you that we're talking about anything other than a class one felony. That means aggravated malicious wounding, bank robbery, armed robbery. I mean, these are some pretty severe and, and, and uh, pretty nasty crimes that we're talking about here. And I'll be honest with you, I, just looking at the way it is right now, if I commit bank robbery at 60 and I serve five years, I could be considered for parole, even if I got a 20-year sentence or more. This, this just doesn't make a lot of sense. And I'll be honest with you, I look at some of the people in here, and I'll use the senior senator from Fairfax. He's in pretty good shape, and, like, he, he's been here forever. So, you know, just saying. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I, I hope we'll consider this bill and, and, and not act on this bill. Thank you. Thank the senator. For what purpose is the senator from Roanoke City? Senator Edwards, rise. Uh, Mr. President, um, speaking for the bill. Senator, the floor. The studies show that the prison population in Virginia has more than doubled since before no parole, starting from 1990 to 2018, I believe it is, more than doubled. And 41% are in the geriatric category. You can go figure. They're not just letting people out. I understand. I read somewhere there's a guy that's 92 that's still in prison. He's been there for I don't know how long, decades. I know another guy that's been there since 1975 committing murder. They're not letting him out. What this would do is simply give the uh, pro board the right to look at the facts to see what the situation is in terms of health and over 55. The people over 55, by the way, typically don't re, re, uh, re, uh, commit crimes, typically. They wear out, by the way. There's such a thing as aging out. Bank robbers don't do it after 50 or so. Uh, the people that do the, the violent crimes are typically in their 20s and maybe 30s. But uh, they would look at the pro board, look at the record, look at the seriousness of the offense, and decide whether the person should be let out. Uh, it costs, the last figure I saw, $43,000 or so on average to keep an inmate in prison. We could save a lot of money by letting some of these people out that we understand we have some in nursing homes that don't even know what, what's going on anymore. They're, they, they're suffering from dementia. You know, wouldn't it be not just humane, but save the Commonwealth a lot of money? Let the pro board let them out on conditional release, depending on their circumstance. Again, the, the figures show what 3% or something like that are actually being let out. That's a very tiny figure. But some ought to be let out, not just for humanitarian reasons, but to save the Commonwealth an awful lot of money. Thank the Senator. For what purpose, Senator from Henrico? Senator Donovan, rise. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to speak to the bill. Senator, it's the floor. 
I have just heard in the conversation on the floor today several times that this would save the Commonwealth a lot of money. I don't think that is the premise upon which we should be making these decisions. There are a lot of places we can save the Commonwealth a lot of money, especially in health care. If there is already a recourse for somebody who is gravely ill or senile to be released predicated on that variable, we do not need to add additional variables, lowering the age of geriatrics to 50, in order to accomplish that. Years ago, we created a situation where when a person was sentenced in Virginia, that sentence meant what it said. That's why we have a 3% parole rate, and that was in order to make sure victims of crimes understood what the consequence was for the person who had committed it. This is a roundabout. We've had a conversation in rules about a study to look at parole and find concrete, effective ways to address that. Piecemealing it on age with arbitrary limits, as suggested by this bill, is a bad decision and unnecessary. And that makes this a bad bill. I hope you'll vote against it. Thank the senator. For what purpose does the senator from Alexandria, Senator Eben, rise? Mr. President, I'd like to ask the senator from Chesapeake, uh, a question, if you would yield. Will the senator yield for a question? I am supposed Senator yields. You have the floor. I would ask the senator if these uh, prisoners, when they're released, uh, if the parole board could uh, ensure that they're on parole for supervision. Senator, is the floor. And I would ask if the senator would yield for um, one additional question. Senator yield. Yes. Senator yield. You have the floor. Um, with our current parole board, do they have the ability to be extremely selective and uh, release people on a variety of characteristics, including uh, not just because they're labeled as geriatric, but on the nature of their crime? Yes, Mr. Yes, I would say the same condition that they are doing right now for 60, the exact same because all we're doing is just changing the age. Everything has to be the same. I thank the gentleman. I thank the gentleman. Thank the senator. For what purpose does the senator from Augusta, Senator Hanger, rise? Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to speak to the bill. Thanks, Senator. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. Uh, I, I feel compelled to speak a little bit there because occasionally uh, more people on this side of the building vote with me than on that side. And I appreciate that when you all do that. But this is going to be one of those occasions. And I'd like to share a little bit of the, the reasoning for why I, I would do that. I had the uh, opportunity about 20 years ago uh, to team up with a former delegate from Vinton. It was kind of an odd partnership for me, but we proposed this geriatric release provision, uh, which passed and has been the law now for, for about 20 years, where you could qualify uh, for a geriatric release if you were 65 and had served at least five years of your sentence. And that's, this is the section that's being modified today by the, by the senator from Northern Chesapeake. And I support it. And, and here's why. And actually, it was taken out of context when the bill was initially passed. In fact, there was an editorial in one of my local papers that said I'd passed a bill that if you were in a marriage that wasn't going too well, just you know, not do anything drastic until you were 60, then you'd only have to serve five years and then you'd be out. So obviously that was, was not what happened, and, but that's, that's what the editorial uh, basically stated because what would happen with my bill. Geriatric has more, uh, there's more uh, meaning in geriatric than just you've achieved 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. Uh, certainly I've passed 50 now, and I don't feel geriatric at all. On the other hand, there are people that we have in our state prison system. You've got you to recognize being, being a criminal is tough work. They age quickly. All right, we've got people, we've got people in, in our prisons who are, basically eating up significant amounts of medical costs. Now, should, we, should the parole board release people who are still a, a, a threat to society, who have not uh, compensated in terms of time served? I would say no, but they should have that discretion. And in fact, they have not, not exercised that discretion adequately, in my opinion. And we're paying extreme amounts of money for final stages of life, as an example, uh, where we could have these individuals out where they're their families could they could be back with their families if they have families. They could be eligible for Medicaid, and if they're in an institution, obviously we put them over here in VCU quite often, and rack up extreme medical bills and end of life. So that's for the parole board to decide. I, I think it's a good bill that the uh, senator from Northern Chesapeake has, and intend to vote for it. Thank the senator. For what purpose, senator from King George, Senator Stewart, rise. 
Mr. President, would the uh, patron yield for another question? Will Senator yield for a question? Senator from Northern Chesapeake. Uh, yeah, Mr. President. Senator Yield, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd ask the gentleman, as I read this, it says everything except a Class I felony. And so I direct the gentleman's attention to 18.2-61, which is a section on rape in Virginia. And that is, um, it's a non-classified felony. And so would a rapist be able to take advantage of this statute? Senator, as the floor. Mr. Chairman, first, I think it's up to the parole board but to make sure I will ask one of my unique lawyers something, Scott, to answer that for me. He's a, to answer that question for me, please. I, have, I, don't, I don't have my law degree yet, but something, Scott, to take care Senator of. From, Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Servell. Uh, Mr. President, I think I heard the question while I was walking to the printer and back, but uh, I think the answer is that if it's unclassified, it's not a class one. Thank you, Mr. President. Speaking to the bill, Mr. Senator, it's the floor. Um, Mr. President, I know that we want to be a compassionate society, and I, I recognize the geriatric provision having practiced in Title 18.2, as many of you all have in here for, gosh, 25 or 30 years or more. It's a difference between being 65 and being 50 years of age, regardless. You know, one of the worst things that I ever had to prosecute in my short time as a Commonwealth's attorney was a fellow that I actually grew up and went to school with. And um, he, at one point, uh, I think it's safe to say he got on drugs pretty bad and kind of lost control of his life. And one night, he was, he was separated from his wife. His wife had custody of the children. Um, he abducted his daughter from the mother and raped her. She was 15 years old in the back of his car down in the woods. And it was horrible. It was horrible. It's probably the only case that I ever enjoyed seeing somebody go to prison. Um, and under this statute, if I read this correctly, he was about 30 years old. He's about 30 years old, maybe 35. He'd be eligible for parole at 50 or 55 years old. And I just think that's the wrong result. I know we want to be compassionate, but let's think about the victims. I mean, we've got to think about the victims in these cases. I spent a lot of time with that young child um, just because it was a horrible thing for her to have to go through, and I suspect she's in counseling to this day. And so while we want to be compassionate, let's think about the victims and, and what we are now going to be exposing them to if you enact this statute. Thank the Senator. For what purpose is the junior senator from Richmond City? Senator Morrissey, rise. Mr. President, I rise to speak in support of the bill. Senator, has the floor. As I've listened, listening to the, my colleagues discuss this bill back and forth, there appears to be a disconnect. There is an assumption that if you're eligible, you're going to then be granted geriatric release. And that's the biggest disconnect. And during committee, we heard from DOC. First of all, let me just say the following. You... If you have been convicted of a class one felony, a crime that carries 20 to life, you are excluded from that body of people that are deemed eligible. Number two, when DOC spoke with the committee, they told us that the number, it's the number of people that are eligible under this category is de minimis. It was a small, very small number. Number three, they told us that the recidivism rate among these people who are granted geriatric release is extremely small. I may be stand to be corrected, but the number was about 1%. Um, also, we need to know those people if you're deemed eligible. Here's one of the main criteria that the parole board is going to consider, the nature of the crime. And I would tell my colleague from Prince George that the horrible nature of that crime, which none of us disagree with, would in all likelihood make him ineligible. Indeed, statistics that were presented to us showed that only 3% of the people were being granted uh, geriatric release. Would the gentleman yield for a question? Well, Senator, One yield. more point, and then I will gladly yield. And Senator, you still have the floor. The next point is that those people who are released, and it's only about 3%, then are under strict parole, uh, many of them for the rest of their natural lives. And the and, the, and the, my final, final point, it only gets to cost. 
and those people that the parole board would consider eligible for geriatric release, they will consider the health of the individual, whether that person has a terminal illness or, the, or something like that. And with that, Mr. S Mr. President, I will yield to the gentleman from Prince George. Senator Yield. Senator from King George. Senator Stewart. Uh, Mr. President, I would ask the gentleman, and I, I don't disagree with what the gentleman said, but I would ask him this. My reference was to victims. And wouldn't the gentleman agree that under this statute, if enacted, that same rapist that I used in my example would be eligible to apply or petition the parole board every year once they reach that age limit? And would that victim not have to go through this every year? I would, Senator has the floor. I would tell the Senator from King George that my recollection, and again, I can be, stand to be corrected, after they've applied, sometimes DOC defers them for three years before they come up again and be, may be considered. But I would tell them this. During a parole hearing where the uh, victim I and mean, the defendant's families are there, the victim is not there. The victim does have a right to speak with parole board uh, by themselves or send a letter so it's not like they're put through that, that, that scenario that you just described. Here's how I think it's best interpreted. To, the person is eligible if they re receive a certain age, but then the parole board is going to consider a very strict degree of criteria whether they're granted parole. First and foremost is that nature of that crime. Given what we were told in committee, almost none of the horrific situations that you described would the person be granted parole. And then you're going to get down to factors like the health. And um, uh, one, of the one of the senators said earlier, it's a huge cost, but we be mindful that, of this. That cost is uh, somewhere north of $60,000 per person, and some of these people who are eligible for geriatric release are at the end of their life, their natural life, and that's why the parole board would consider them eligible. Other question? For what purpose is Senator from Eastern Fairfax? Senator Servell, rise. Thank you, Mr. President. Speaking to the bill very briefly. Senator, the floor. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm, as the sixth youngest member of this body who's age 48, this session's making me feel like I'm about 70. So um, having said that, you know, these uh, fiscal impact statements that we get on these bills have some helpful information in them. And I would just note that the one that's attached to this bill says that the bill would make eligible 787 people. And, and then it talks about in the following year, there's 235, and the year after that, 172. With a 3% grant rate, that's 21 people. So that's what we're talking about here basically is about 21 people possibly being released. And just for some examples, in uh, last year, 2018, the parole board released somebody, one person who had reached age 60, who at the time had been costing DOC a million dollars per year because he was unable to breathe on his own because of irreversible paralysis on his chest muscles. I mean, th these are the kinds of people we're talking about. We're not talking about letting out a rapist who just turned 50. That isn't going to happen. When the hearing happens, the victim gets noticed. The victim can testify. The Commonwealth attorney can make noise. I mean, these are, these are people that are not going to get parole. So I just think we need to be focused on what the bill is actually aimed at and not what a bunch of unrealistic scenarios that might happen. For what purpose is the senior senator from Fairfax, Senator Sasslaw, rise? Thank you, Mike. Nick. Your mic may not be on. Before these people all have me dead and buried, I'll move the pending question. <laughs> the question is, shall the pending question be ordered? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk, close the roll. Uh, 16 is 24. I-16, no's 24. The pending question is not ordered. Debate may continue. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 624? <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, <laughs> the question is, shall Senate Bill 624 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? 
Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 21, noes 19. Ayes 21, noes 19. Senate Bill 624 passes. Senate Bill 666, a bill relating to voter registration notification of denial. Senator from Northwestern Fairfax, Senator Boyce Mr. President, I move the bill pass. Thank you, Senator. Speak to the bill. Speaking to the bill. Senator has the floor. Um, SB 666. Uh, is dealing with uh, voter registration. Currently, uh, registrars have 14 days to to alert a registration um, applicant that there there's a problem with it. This would reduce it down to five days. It would also expand the available means uh, to include telephone and email, but it would continually require that a mailed notification would um, take place as well to let that person know that they've got a problem. And, Mr. President, I move the bill pass. Thank the senator. For what purpose is the senior senator from Chesapeake, Senator Cosgrove, rise? I will the gentlelady yield for a question. Will the senator yield? Yes, sir, I will. Senator yield, you have the floor. Uh, I'd ask the senator, um, does the bill number have any indication of the, about this bill? <laughs> no, <laughs> sir. <Senator's floor>. Just, <laughs> just, Mr. President, this is a good bill. It is not evil, and I move the bill pass. <laughs> I, I thank the gentlelady. <laughs> thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding this bill number? Seeing none, the question is, shall this bill pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk will close the roll. <laughs> Ayes 31, noes 9. Ayes 31, noes 9. This bill passes. Senate Bill 698, a bill relating to alcoholic beverage control, distiller licenses, monthly revenue transfers. Senator from Williamsburg, Senator Mason. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move the bill pass and speaking to the motion. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, some members of the Senate. Um, last year, the gentleman from Lynchburg, Senator Peek, was made aware of a problem that our distillers had. And as you likely know, distilleries are operate as ABC stores. So the distilleries were creating their own product, selling it, but then had to send 100% of the proceeds to ABC to have it processed and have their percentage be sent back. Didn't make any sense. They were making it there. They were operating as ABC store. So the, the senator from Lynchburg came up with a process to fix the problem. So we have 46 distillers. 23 of them have applied. 16 have been approved. Process works very well. Uh, interestingly, one of the seven that has not been approved is one of mine in my locality who thinks it's a great process, is in support of the bill. He just hadn't gotten around to reapplying. And that's why we're here, Mr. President, because we've set up a process that works very well. But under the senator from Lynchburg's bill, as of July 1, everybody would have to do it. And so to the point of my local distiller, he hadn't gotten back around to it. We don't want to force him to have to do it in July. We want him to have a process to do so. That process is you have to have six months of accurate, timely, and verified accounting records and reporting, full compliance with all aspects of the agreements, manuals, and operating, satisfactory compliance to the latest ABC internal audit, and no ongoing or pending enforcement matters with ABC. So, Mr. President, this simply allows us some flexibility on the go forward that if you haven't met these requirements, you're not going to get approved. And if you're a distillery that doesn't want to apply, and you're, it's essentially a counting change, and you don't have to go through the change, you don't have to do it either. So we will continue to work with all distillers to make sure that if they want to do it, we take them through an orderly process and get them approved. But if they don't, and they're good to go with the way they're doing business, Mr. President, this bill will afford them the opportunity to do so. So this bill's on the success that the, the gentleman from Lynchburg started last year, and I hope you'll support the bill. Thank the Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 698? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 698 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 27, noes 13. Ayes 27, noes 13. Senate Bill 698 passes. Senate Bill 742, a bill relating to rental or leasing of dog or cat prohibited civil penalty. 
Senator from Prince William County, Senator McPike. Mr. President, I move the bill pass and speaking to that motion. Senator, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this bill uh, provides a, a means to uh, prohibit financial institutions uh, for loan or financing agreements uh, for rental, lease, or sale of dog or cat where the animal is subject to repossession upon the terms. And so this is really the, the core of the bill, Mr. President, is to ensure there is uh, still mechanisms of finance. However, repossession is not one of those options, and there's support amongst the small lenders, uh, pet store owners, as well as animal rights activists as well. And I move the bill passed. Thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 742? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 742 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 27, noes 13. Ayes 27, noes 13. Senate Bill 742 passes. Senate Bill 787, a bill relating to City of Norfolk financing of an arena and facility. Senator from Accomack, Senator Lewis. Mr. President, members of the Senate, Senate Bill 787 is the bill designed to facilitate the construction of an arena project in Norfolk. It's been the top priority of Mayor Alexander for the last two years and, and of the council as well. Uh, the city is uniquely poised to, con to uh, take advantage of a, a, a lack of market uh, in the area. We're, many of our facilities are outmoded uh, or undersized to support some of the uh, events and activities, which other cities such as Memphis, Milwaukee, and Jacksonville, which are of similar size as Hampton Roads, have been able to capitalize on. Discussions with promoters tell us that there is a real market out there uh, for an expanded facility. This facility would be a 15,000-seat facility. Uh, the city has sites ready and is ready to move, poised ready to move on this project so it won't lay dormant for any period of time if uh, this enabling legislation is passed. What this bill does is allow the uh, issuance of bonds for the construction of this facility and, as we have done with similar projects across the Commonwealth, allows the sales tax re realized from activities at this facility to be used to repay the revenue bonds. So it would be, uh, be the pleasure of the, bill, of the body to pass the bill, and I would so move. Thank the Senator. Do any other Senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 787? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 787 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the Senators ready to vote? Have all the Senators voted? Do any Senators desire to change their vote? Clerk, close the roll. Ayes 37, noes 2. Ayes 37, noes 2. Senate Bill 787 passes. Senate Bill 856, a bill relating to State Board of Elections, increased membership and terms, Commissioner of Elections, role and eligibility report. Senator from Alexandria, Senator Abbott. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, SB 856 would um, fulfill a, um, a goal that's been um, held for a few years by increasing the uh, number of members of the State Board of Elections from three to five. The board was created before the uh, inclusion of open meeting requirements in Virginia. So right now, uh, two members of that three-member board cannot talk to each other outside of the meetings uh, where uh, minutes are taken and so forth. Further, uh, Allowing uh, the board to have five members would allow for greater geographic diversity. Right now, the board has uh, three members who each reside in one of the Commonwealth's population centers, being Northern Virginia, the Richmond area, and Hampton Roads. There is no uh, representation for the less populated areas of Virginia with smaller jurisdictions, uh, which, are, which have unique needs uh, with their electors and, and their elections. So this would uh, allow the governor to do a better job in including them. And it contains a provision encouraging that the appointments be made with due consideration of geographic representation. With that, I move that we uh, pass the bill. Thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 856? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 856 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 34, no 6. Ayes 34, no 6. Senate Bill 856 passes. Senate Bill 857, a bill relating to voter registration, public access not required for certain voter registration events. Senator from Alexandria, Senator Abbott. 
Thank you, Mr. President. This is one of the um, simpler um, bills that I've had in a long time, and it's kind of uh, what I would call red, white, and blue. Uh, right now, uh, our voter registrars are not allowed to attend voter uh, naturalization ceremonies and register uh, new, new, new Americans and new Virginians unless they're at locations open to the public. So if there's a naturalization ceremony in a uh, federal courthouse, in a closed room, and there's limited uh, attendance or guests, or in a... Um, auditorium that's not in a school that's not open to the general public. They cannot attend. They cannot register voters. This would allow for that, and this would also allow for them to enter uh, public high schools or really any high schools uh, to register voters as well. So it's a nonpartisan allowance for our local registrars. And with that, I hope that we'll pass Senate Bill 857. Thank the Senator. For what purpose is Senator from Hanover? Senator McDougall, rise. Mr. President, would the gentleman yield for a question? Will Senator yield? I yield. Senator yield, you have the floor. M Mr. President, I ask the gentleman, is the locations that are closed to the public limited to schools, or could they also be private organizations or entities that would be limited to the public that the register would now be able to do? Senator, has the uh, floor. The, um, if you look at the um, amendments on pages 16 and 17, it is limited to uh, schools and, um, and naturalization ceremonies that, that are not, uh, like on 36, 37, voter registration conducted in a high school or at the location of a naturalization ceremony shall not be required to, to be open to the public. And that's the only uh, general change with the bill. Further question? Mr. Chairman, would the gentleman yield for a further question? Senator Yield. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, as I'm looking down, um, it seems like much of, line, of Code Section 24.2.415 is stricken. What changes do those provide in addition to the ones the gentleman just described? Senator, it's the floor. I believe that the only thing that was stricken was on lines, um, it was supposed to be 52 through 54, and on line um, 50, no, I'm sorry, 19 through 21. I, um, I'm looking at the changes now, and um, if you look at number eight, it says, yeah, I, we could take this by temporarily, and I can confer with the gentleman if that's okay. Thank, thank the gentleman. Thank the Senator. Without objection, Senate Bill 857 will go by temporarily. Senate Bill 987, a bill relating to hunting waterfowl duck blinds. Senator from King George, Senator Stewart. Thank you, Mr. President. Move the bill pass and speaking to it. Thank you, Senator. You have the floor. Um, Mr. President, uh, members of the body, <clears throat> you all will recall we had some discussion about duck blinds last year, and the bill that I carried proved to be a bridge too far for the folks down at the other end of the hall. Um, so we narrowed it this year, and basically what this bill just says is you cannot put a duck blind within 150 yards of somebody's house or home where they reside unless you have permission from them. And that's to just avoid that controversy of somebody shooting guns out in front of somebody's house and limiting their ability to use their yard. It also includes a provision which DGIF uh, was concerned about. Apparently in the state, a lot of folks were buying permits to put duck blinds, but they hadn't actually bought a hunting license or their federal or state duck stamp. And so the bill also says now if you're going to buy a blind license, you have to have first bought your hunting license and your federal and state duck stamp. And that's the bill. Hope you'll support it. Thank the Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 987? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 987 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 36, noes 4. Ayes 36, noes 4. Senate Bill 987 passes. Senate Bill 1028, a bill relating to additional local sales and use tax in Northampton County, appropriations of Northampton County to incorporated towns for educational purposes. Senator from Accomack, Senator Lewis. 
Uh, Mr. President, members of the Senate, this is a measure, a type of measure we've seen before. Uh, last year we did this to the, to the county of Halifax. This year I believe the senator from Mecklenburg has a, has a similar uh, version or bill working its way through the system. Essentially what we have is a situation in Northampton County where uh, the county is in dire need of significant infrastructure improvements. It's seen a dramatic decrease in its uh, assessed value of its real property. Uh, they have about 75% of their students are on free and reduced lunch. So about the only means uh, that they can arrive at for funding the massive infrastructure they need, they need to make sure the children in Northampton County are learning in a safe and sound environment and are able to learn because the environment is safe and sound is through taxing themselves with an increased sales tax, which would uh, have to be imposed by refer after referendum uh, and then would be devoted solely and specifically towards uh, school infrastructure. So with that, I'd ask that the bill pass. Thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 1028? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 1028 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 28, noes 11. Ayes 28, noes 11. Senate Bill 1028 passes. Senate Bill 1090, a bill relating to scenic rivers, Grays Creek, and Surrey County. Senator from James City County, Senator Norman. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of my cohort and myself, I would move that Senate Bill 1090 pass, and it is merely the naming of a portion of Grays Creek in downtown Surrey County, Virginia. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 1090? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 1090 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 35, noes 5. Ayes 35, noes 5. Senate Bill 1090 passes. Returning to page 7, Senate Bill 869. We have a second floor substitute. The senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Staff. Mr. President. I wish we'd reconsider the vote by which the bill was ordered to be engrossed in advance through its third constitutional reading. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the vote by which the bill was ordered engrossed in advance through its third reading be reconsidered? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the Senators ready to vote? Have all the Senators voted? Do any Senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. The motion is agreed to. Senior Senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D-Step. Mr. President, I'd like to reconsider the vote by which the committee amendments were agreed to. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the Senate reconsider the vote by which the committee amendments were agreed to? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the Senators ready to vote? Have all the Senators voted? Do any Senators desire to change their vote? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 39, no zero. Ayes 39, no zero. The motion is agreed to. The senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Steff. Mr. President, I'd like to reject the committee amendments. With the recommendation that they be rejected, the question is, shall the committee amendments be adopted? All in favor, the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The no's have it. The committee amendments are rejected. The senior Senator from Virginia B, Senator D. Staff. Mr. President, I'd like to withdraw floor amendment substitute number one. Without objection, floor substitute number one is withdrawn. The senior Senator from Virginia B, Senator D. Staff. Mr. President, I'd like to waive the reading of floor substitute number two. Question is, shall the reading of floor substitute number two be waived? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The reading of the floor substitute is waived. Senior Senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Stout. Mr. President, I'd like to agree to floor substitute number two. Does Senator want to speak to that? Speaking to that. Mr. Senator, has the floor. This is a bill that we've gone back and forth on a little bit. Now it goes back to the original intent for, um, in which planning district number 23, which is Hampton Roads, um, that if a newspaper fails to publish a notice that's been paid for and properly given time to the to be printed to the uh, newspaper 
that such locality deemed having read the notice requirements of the subsection as long as the notice was published in the next available edition of the newspaper, having general circulation in the locality. So, Mr. President, that kind of is it, and we're back to having it restricted to just planning district number 23, which encompasses Hampton, Hampton Roads. So with that, Mr. President, I move the uh, bill pass. I'm sorry. The floor How substitute be agreed to. The floor substitute be agreed to. Thank you, Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding floor substitute number two? Seeing none, the question is, shall the floor substitute number two be agreed to all in favor? The motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Floor substitute number two is agreed to. Senior Senator from Virginia B. Senator D. Step. Mr. President, I'd like to grant it and gross in advance the bill to its third constitutional reading. Thank you, Senator. Bill 869. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed in advance to its third reading? All in favor, the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed in advance to its third reading. The senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Step. Mr. President, I'd like to suspend the rules and dispense with the third constitutional reading. Question is, shall the rules be suspended in the third constitutional reading be dispensed with all in favor of the motion will record their vote? Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk, close the roll. Ayes 38, nose 1. Ayes 38, nose 1. The rules are suspended and the third constitutional reading is dispensed with. The senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Step. Mr. President, I move the passage of Senate Bill 869. Senator, you want to speak to that? Speaking to that, as There's I stated floor. earlier, Mr. President, what this bill does is specifically in planning district number 23, Hampton Roads, it ensures that if a jurisdiction has paid for their notice to be put into the newspaper and the proper amount of time and the newspaper fails to do so, that it would be uh, that proper notice would have been given if in subsequent um, newspaper uh, editions that the notice has been met. And again, in the next general circulation of that newspaper for the locality. So with that, Mr. President, I move the bill pass. Thank the Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding Senate Bill 869? Seeing none, the question is, shall Senate Bill 869 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk, close the roll. Ayes 21, nose 19. Ayes 21, nose 19. Senate Bill 869 passes. Mr. Returning President. to page... Well, what purpose is Senator from Bedford, Senator Newman, rise? Mr. President, if we could return to page 17 uh, on Senate Bill 1028. Mr. President, having voted on the prevailing side by which the bill passed, I move that we reconsider the vote. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the vote by which Senate Bill 1028 passed be reconsidered? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. The motion is agreed to. Senator from Accomack, Senator Lewis. Mr. President, having previously explained the bill, I move the bill pass. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall Senate Bill 1028 pass? All in favor of the motion will record their vote. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 26, nose 13. Ayes 26, nose 13. Senate Bill 1028 does not pass. It required 27 votes for passage. Returning to page 16, Senate Bill 857. Senator from Alexandria, Senator Eben. Thank you, Mr. President. Could that bill go by for the day? Uh, without objection, Senate Bill 857 will go by for the day.
What purpose, Senator from Western Fairfax, Senator Marsden Rise? Thank you, Mr. President. Having uh, voted on the prevailing side for which we passed Senate Bill 869, I would ask that we reconsider that vote. Which page are we on, Senator? Page, page, number, page number seven. Question is, shall the vote by which Senate Bill 869 pass be reconsidered all in favor of the motion will record their vote aye those opposed no are the senators ready to vote have all the senators voted do any senators desire to change their vote clerk close the roll ayes 39 no zero ayes 39 no zero the motion is agreed to the senior senator from virginia beat senator d staff mr president i'd like to take senate bill 869 by for the day Without objection, Senate Bill 869 will go by for the day. Mr. President. Senator from Bedford, Senator Newman. Mr. President, um, let me get the bill. Mr. President, returning again to page 17. Senator, it's the floor. Mr. President, I'm going to make a motion that we reconsider the vote by which the bill did not pass. And, Mr. President, it takes a unanimous vote. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I have over the last... Uh, many years voted against these. Uh, quite honestly, the city of Lynchburg asked me to do this. And I didn't think it was right for the city of Lynchburg, and I said no. But the reason for reconsidering it earlier was not to kill it for that, that purpose. Uh, Mr. President, there are occasionally um, items that we give as courtesies on this floor, and I would ask that we get it before us and allow it to go by for the day so that we can further consider it in the same way that we have considered other ones of the exact same nature for other localities. So, Mr. President, I would ask. Thank you, Senator. For what purpose, Senator from James City County, Senator Normant, rise. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Speaking to the motion Senator for the reconsideration floor. on the second occasion, and it does take the unanimous consent of the body, I would add to that immediately. Everybody needs to calm down for a second. You know, uh, the immediate accusations of retribution as a result of a senator casting a vote is very unladylike and very ungentlemanly-like. And I say on behalf of the, the, my seatmate that he has every time, every time consistently voted against these bills. So for anyone to immediately assume that there was some kind of insidious political move here is absolutely foolishness. So I would respectfully ask my colleagues to consider granting unanimous consent for the reconsideration of the bill. I do not anticipate that my seatmate would change his vote on it because he has been consistent his entire legislative career. And then that we would pass it by for the day and allow the senator from downtown Accomack to see if he has any magic left in his, in his wand. Thank you, Senator. The pending motion is one for reconsideration on the second pass, which requires unanimous consent. The question is, shall the vote by which Senate Bill 1028 failed be reconsidered? All in favor of the motion will record their vote aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their vote? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. The motion is agreed to. Senator from Accomack, Senator Lewis. 
Mr. President, hoping that this geriatric has some magic left in his wand, I would ask that the bill go by for the day. <laughs> Thank the senator. Uh, without objection, Senate Bill 1028 will go by for the day. Uncontested calendar, Senate bills on second reading. Senior Senator from Fairfax, Senator Sasslaw. Mr. President, I move that all Senate bills on second reading on the uncontested calendar is pages 19 through 32, Senate Bill 919 through Senate Bill 1070, that's 1070, be advanced to their engrossment and third reading in a block after the adoption of any amendments thereto. Any senator desiring to remove a bill from that block, please do so after the clerk has read the number of the bill. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall all Senate bills on second reading on the uncontested calendar on pages 19 through 32, Senate Bill 919 through Senate Bill 1070, be engrossed in advance of their third reading in the block after the adoption of any amendments thereto, and that any senator desiring a bill be removed from the block will do so after the clerk has read the number of the bill. All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. The clerk will read the number of the bills. Senate Bill 919, reported from the Committee on Finance and Appropriations with an amendment. Senator from Lynchburg, Senator Pete. Yes, sir, Mr. President, I move the uh, com committee amendment be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendment be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee amendment is agreed to. Senate Bill 989, reported from the Committee on Finance and Appropriations with an amendment. Senator from King George, Senator Stewart. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the amendment be adopted. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendment be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee amendment is adopted. Senate Bill 50, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Senate Bill 59, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with amendments. Senator from Augusta, Senator Hanger. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the committee amendments be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendments be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee amendments are agreed to. Senate Bill 138, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Senate Bill 139, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Senate Bill 153, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Senate Bill 170, Reported from the Committee on Education and Health with amendments. Senator from Hampton, Senator Locke. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the amendments be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendments be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee amendments are agreed to. Senate Bill 237, reported for the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. Mr. President, I move that the substitute be adopted. Where are you? Right here. <laughs> Senator from Southern Fairfax, Senator Barker. Question is, shall the committee substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is adopted. Senate Bill 264, reported for the Committee on Education and Health with an amendment. Senator from Loudoun, Senator Bell. Mr. President, I move the committee amendment. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendment be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee amendment is adopted. Senate Bill 313, reported from the Committee on Education and Health. Senate Bill 366, reported from the Committee on Education and Health. Senate Bill 385, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology, with a substitute. Senator from Prince William, Senator McPike. Mr. President, can this come out of the block and by for the day? Without objection, Senate Bill 385 will come out of the block and go by for the day. Senate Bill 387, reported for the Committee on General Laws and Technology with a substitute. Senator from Prince William, Senator McPike. Mr. President, can this come out of the block? Without objection, and also by for the day? Uh, no. It's out of the block. Without objection, Senate Bill 387 will come out of the block. Senate Bill 392, reported for the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. Senator from Prince William, Senator McPike. Mr. President, I move that the substitute be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 397, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. The junior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator Kiggins. Mr. President, I move that the committee substitute be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. 
The uh, seventh committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 463, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with amendments. Senator from Spotsylvania, Senator Reeves. Thank you, Mr. President. I would uh, move the committee amendments. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendments be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes seven. The committee amendments are adopted. Senate Bill 540, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with amendment. Senator from Fauquier, Senator Vogel. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the amendment be agreed to. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendment be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes seven. The committee amendment is agreed to. Senate Bill 553, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with a substitute. Senator from Mecklenburg, Senator Ruff. Mr. President, I move the substitute be agreed to. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. <laughs> Those opposed, no. The I-7 uh, committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 579, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with a substitute. Senator from Northern Fairfax, Senator Howe. I move the substitute be agreed to. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The I-7 of the committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 633, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. Senator from Fauquier, Senator Vogel. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the substitute be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The I-7 of the committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 658, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology with a substitute, and there is a floor substitute. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Servell. Thank you, Mr. President. With the recommendation that it be rejected, I would move the committee substitute. Thank you, Senator. The question is, with the recommendation that it be rejected, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, No. no. The no's have it. The committee substitute is rejected. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Servell. Um, Mr. President, I move a wave reading, moved to wave reading of the floor substitute. Thanks, Senator. The question is, shall the reading of the floor substitute be waived? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The reading of the floor substitute is waived. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Servell. Mr. President, I move the floor substitute and speak to that motion. Senator, is the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. The, uh, this is basically just a technical fix. The senator from King George pointed out a, an error in committee that for some reason didn't make it into the substitute or they uploaded the wrong substitute, and this just conforms the bill to what the committee did. I would move the substitute pass. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the floor substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The aye have it. The floor substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 661, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with a substitute. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Servell. Would move the substitute. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is adopted. Senate Bill 736, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with a substitute. Senator from Rockingham, Senator Obenshane. Mr. President, I move the committee substitute. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is adopted. Senate Bill 739, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. Senator from Bath, Senator Deeds. Mr. President, I move adoption of the committee substitute. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is adopted. Senate Bill 864, reported from the Committee on Education and Health. Senate Bill 874, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Senate Bill 885, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. Senator from Western Fairfax, Senator Marsden. Thank you, Mr. President. I Move that the committee amendment, uh, committee substitute be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The aye have it. The committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 896, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Senate Bill 897, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. The senior Senator from Virginia B, Senator D. Staff. Mr. President, I move the committee substitute. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 925, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. 
Senate Bill 951, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. Senate Bill 967, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with amendments. Senior Senator from Chesapeake, Senator Cosgrove. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the body agree to the committee amendments. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the committee amendments be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee amendments are agreed to. Senate Bill 993, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. Senator from Hampton, Senator Locke. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the substitute be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is agreed to. Senate Bill 1044, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology with a substitute, and there is a floor substitute. Senator from Prince William County, Senator McPike. Thank you, Mr. President. With the recommendation that the substitute be rejected, I move the substitute be agreed to. Thank the Senator. The question is, with the recommendation that it be rejected, shall the Senate agree to the committee's substitute? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. No. The no's have it. The committee substitute is rejected. Senator from Prince William County, Senator McPike. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the waive of the reading of the floor substitute. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the reading of the floor substitute be waived? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The reading of the floor substitute is waived. Senator from Prince William County, uh, Senator McPike. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we agree to the substitute in speaking to that motion. Senator, is the floor. Uh, this Section 1 bill now uh, just clarifies from the, what was seen in committee for the Section 1 uh, to establish the requirements of the licensure versus issue the license. So that is the clarif uh, clarifying nature of this substitute and move that to be agreed to. Thank you, Senator. For what purpose, Senator from Northern Chesapeake? Senator Spruill rise. Mr. President, the patrons... Uh, I yield. Well, Senator Yield, you have the floor. Um, talk with Mayor Kenneth Alexander, the group that he belongs to. Has anyone worked with that group to try to work out the difference? But what I'm hearing from them that uh, the bill that's part of the state, including with the amendments, was not to their liking, that they thought maybe it was biased to one, one particular group. So has anyone talked with them about this particular bill? Senator, the floor. Mr. President, I'd answer the Senator that I have spoken with all groups and there is no opposition to my awareness now. There was initially. All of that has been withdrawn with the drawing of the Section 1 approach. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Question is, shall the floor substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The floor substitute is adopted. Senate Bill 1045, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. The junior senator from Chesterfield, Senator Hashmi. Mr. President, I move uh, the adoption of the sub committee substitute. Thank the senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is adopted. Senate Bill 1046, reported from the Committee on Education and Health. Senate Bill... 1066, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Senate Bill 1070, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology. Question is, shall the Senate bills be engrossed in advance to their third reading? That is, all bills except for Senate bills 385 and 387. All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bills are engrossed in advance to their third reading. On page 24, returning to Senate Bill 387. Senator from Prince William County, Senator McPike. Thank you, Mr. President. I understand that this bill has been uh, requested in finance and appropriations, and so I move that the bill be recommitted to the Committee on Senate Finance and Appropriations. Question is... Question is, shall Senate Bill 387 be re-referred to the Committee on Finance and Appropriations, all in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is re-referred to the Committee on Finance and Appropriations. Regular calendar. Senate bills on second reading. Senate Bill 251. A bill relating to pharmacy benefits managers, license, and regulation. Reported from the Committee on Commerce and Labor with a substitute, and there are two floor amendments. Senator from Roanoke City, Senator Edwards. Mr. President, I move the substitute. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the committee substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee substitute is adopted. Senator from Augusta, Senator Hanger. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move that we waive the reading of my proposed floor amendment. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the reading of the floor amendment be waived? All in favor, the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The reading of the floor amendment is waived. Senator from Augusta, Senator Hanger. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the Senate. Uh, Senate Bill uh, 251 proposed my, my seatmate uh, from Roanoke is a good bill in terms that it basically sets up a requirement that PBMs, pharmacy benefit managers, uh, be licensed, and it sets up a regulatory scheme or how regulations will be in place to provide oversight uh, for PBMs. The controversial part of this particular piece of legislation is uh, a feature called spread pricing, uh, which I would, would uh, submit causes prices to moderate and be uh, stable for employers. There are others who would suggest that if we eliminate spread pricing, it would be helpful in controlling uh, the cost of pharmaceuticals. I think we're all concerned about the cost of pharmaceuticals and want to do whatever we can to control those costs. But uh, here's basically the essence of, of the amendment. Spread pricing, uh, it's also known as risk mitigation pricing, provides employers a price certain for prescription drug benefit payments to pharmacies where the PBM itself takes on the risk of daily fluctuations in drug pricing and differencing different pharmacy changes and charges for the same drug is incentivized to push pharmacies to reduce their acquisition costs. Under spread pricing, the PBMs are at risk for drug price fluctuations and can, and in fact do, sometimes pay pharmacies more than the PBMs are paid by their clients. My uh, a proposed floor amendment would, would strike the reference to uh, spread pricing, and then it would also strike the, the licensing, uh, which would basically not allow spread pricing. So I will hope, I think there would perhaps be others that would want to speak to this, but I would hope that the uh, Senate would adopt my floor amendment. Thank the Senator. For what purpose, Senator from Henrico, Senator Donovan, rise. Thank you, Mr. President. I speak. I rise to speak to the floor amendment. Senator, is the floor. Um, Mr. President, again, one of the major charges from our constituents is to look at the cost of health care. And how much patients pay for prescriptions is an integral part of that health care cost, uh, especially in light of how large deductibles are now. And PBMs were initially designed as an administrative agent to help make um, more efficient the process of obtaining low-cost prescriptions for patients and constituents. It's not exactly how it's worked out. And part of the reason that we have trouble understanding exactly where the money is going is that, of course, we don't have an understanding of what the contractual agreements are. But there are several ways in which PBMs earn money. Now, let's keep in mind, PBMs don't make anything. They don't sell anything. They administrate. And there are many ways, again, in which they make money, and only one of them is this spread pricing. And that's basically the difference between what they pay for, for a prescription or a medication uh, as compared to what they sell it for. And, Mr. President, in Virginia, we now have in our Medicaid plans... Most of the Medicaid plans compliant with spread um, but, uh, by eliminating spread pricing, and we will be asking all of the other MCOs this year to eliminate spread pricing because it is such a large cost to the state. In fact, when the state looked at the cost for the PBM just for MCOs, we're talking about around $31 million, or $29 million, excuse me. That was a different, that was a different aspect. That's how much money we have when we have a control over what prescriptions we give out. That doesn't happen in the private sector. And um, I would like this body to vote against this particular amendment because this is one good way to start bringing into alignment, passing down any money that can be saved to the patients. Now, if the PBMs come to you and the health plans and tell you that the costs that they may be losing, the income they may be losing in this arena in order to um, keep that money will just be amortized into other patients' premiums and spread out, 
then I think we will have to go further as a body because when you have an organization that doesn't make anything, doesn't sell anything, has a corner on the market with three of them having 70% of the market reporting billions of dollars of income a year, so much money that one of those PBMs can buy a health plan, I would ask them why their profits aren't decreased so that those savings can be passed down to those patients. So, Mr. President, this bill begins to make a change in how we are able to make sure that patients do get a lower price on um, prescription drugs, and it also makes sure that we begin to protect them from a very mysterious but high-profit aspect of health care. So please vote against this amendment. What purpose does Senator from Roanoke City, Senator Edwards, rise? Uh, Mr. President, uh, I would hope that it would be the pleasure of the body to vote against the floor amendment. Vote no on the floor amendment. What the floor amendment does is, um, is to abolish the abolition of spread pricing. That is, it would allow spread pricing. We want to abolish spread pricing. Let me tell you why. First of all, this bill was put in, and the thrust of the bill is to license pharmaceutical benefit managers by the State Corporation Commission to provide transparency in what they're doing. Pharmaceutical benefit managers were initially set up by insurance companies to manage um, prescription drug benefits. That's a good idea. The problem is, is total lack of transparency. And what the pharmaceutical benefit managers are doing is using what is known as spread pricing as opposed to pass-through pricing, passing it through and charging administrative costs so everybody knows what's going on. Instead, spread pricing is a method by which the, the price spread is the difference between what pharmaceutical benefit managers pay uh, for the, manuf the manufacturers for the drugs and the difference and what the pharmaceutical benefit managers uh, charge uh, the insurance companies or the, the uh, managed care providers or, the or individuals. And the difference, that difference is what they keep. And the process means they're making millions and billions of dollars. And if you want to know why the price of medic your prescription medication has gone up and up and up, it's because of the method that pharmaceutical benefit managers are using, including the process of spread pricing. For example, um, the study, numerous studies have shown that spread pricing results in higher premiums and costs, and not a single study exists to show that spread pricing controls costs versus other methods of pricing. The Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services um, advised that the use of spread pricing is inflating prescription drug costs that are borne by beneficiaries and by taxpayers when it comes to the Center for Medicare and Medicaid control. Uh, Mr. President, again, numerous studies show spread pricing results in higher costs for prescription medication. Other states have abolished spread pricing. Uh, for example, Pennsylvania, um, between 2013 and 2017, found that taxpayers paid pharmaceutical benefit managers under the Medicaid uh, system more than double the price from 2013 to 2017. From taxpayers were paying $1.4 billion in 2013 and $2.8 billion uh, in 2017. Pharmaceutical benefit managers uh, in in uh, Ohio pocketed 220, almost 225 million dollars just through spread pricing alone. 
in just in one year in Kentucky, a state report found that pharmaceutical benefit managers kept 100, almost 100. $123.5 million in spread pricing annually. In Louisiana, uh, pr pharmaceutical benefit managers retained $42 million that was incorrectly listed as, quote, medical costs. In New York State, 32% markup in generic drugs. Uh, in other words, PBMs are using uh, the idea, concept of spread pricing uh, in a way that's detrimental uh, to the taxpayers and detrimental to the payers who happen to be voters in, in the long run, the insurance companies as well. So, Mr. President, in Virginia, a state commission report on Medicaid found that Pharmaceutical benefit managers pocketed $29 million in spread pricing alone, not including rebates. So if you want to know why the, pharma the pharma uh, prescription medications have gone up and up, it's spread pricing by the pharmaceutical benefit managers. So we want to outlaw, as other states have done, this process of spread pricing and require them to do pass-through pricing so we know what the prices are. And we could save money for the Medicaid system, and insurance companies could save money, and taxpayers could save money, and, and, and insurers could save money in the long run. So please vote no on this floor amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. For what purpose, Senator from Southern Fairfax? Senator Barker, rise. Uh, Mr. President, I rise to speak to the floor amendment. Senator, the floor. Uh, Mr. President, I rise to speak in favor of this particular floor amendment. Uh, what it, if, if the floor amendment passes, what it will do is provide more competition and provide the opportunity for options to employers and health insurance plans in terms of being able to negotiate uh, with, the op with, the, uh, with the drug companies uh, that are providing, in many instances, have raised prices substantially uh, throughout the process and uh, in some cases have also then limited the, ben the uh, rebates and the, uh, the uh, benefits that are provided there. Uh, what we have right now, as has been referenced by the senator from Roanoke, uh, is that there are two methods in which the pharmacy benefit managers uh, are involved in, the, in, the, uh, the, in effect, bringing down the price of the drug from what is the list price at the uh, drug manufacturers to what is the price that is paid uh, with distribution to the pharmacies and others. Uh, those two methods are, as cited by the senator from Roanoke, uh, pass-through and spread pricing. At various times and in various situations, both of those have been the ones that were most cost effective there. My concern is that if we go to only a single uh, category of operation there, that in essence we will have limited the ability of pharmacy benefit managers and the, uh, the pharmacists and others uh, to be able to uh, negotiate the prices uh, in ways that provide the best benefit and the best option for their, uh, their customers. Uh, there are a lot of things that are uh, that need to be fixed uh, as it relates to pharmacy benefit managers and some of these types of things. Uh, some of those were certainly addressed from the senator from Henrico uh, as it relates to uh, transparency, licensing, those types of things. Uh, but what I think we need to do is make sure that our uh, large employers in Virginia have the option of being able to work with pharmacy benefit managers who are doing spread pricing and also have the option of being able to work with pharmacy benefit managers who are handling the pass-throughs uh, so that they can determine what is best in, in the best interest of their employees and their families in terms of both the, the drugs that are available and the, uh, the prices that are paid and negotiated throughout the process here. So I think it really comes down to a matter of do we provide the employers and the plans the ability to get the best deal uh, in, in the, at, at the current situation. And it may be that in one uh, year, one method is going to provide them the best deal for their employees for their, uh, and, those, and their families. It may be that the next year the alternative approach would be better for them. And so it allows them that option to be able to switch back and forth. Right now, many of the plans have moved from, away from uh, some uh, spread pricing to, uh, to, to pass through, but not all of them at this point. Uh, and I think we need to keep that option open as to which method they, uh, they have available. If they have only one method available, I'm concerned that the, uh, the competition aspect of it will be lost and there will be higher prices that will be paid. With that, I would urge that the uh, body vote yes on this proposed floor amendment from the senator from Augusta.
Thank you, Senator. For what purpose is the senior senator from Chesapeake, Senator Cosgrove, rise? Speak to the floor, amendment. Senator, is the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that you'll listen to Senator Edwards and Senator Donovan and, and others. Um, these PBMs, you know, they've, they've been a problem for a while. If you talk to your small pharmacist, not Walgreens, not CVS, not Rite Aid, but your small independent pharmacists, they will tell you they definitely need this bill as it is and not with the floor substitute. Basically, PBMs are making billions of dollars. As Senator Donovan said, they don't make anything, they don't sell anything, they just dictate how much we're gonna pay for something. So, yeah, it sounds like lawyers, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I would ask everybody to really think about your local pharmacist and not just the big plans or, 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 or the big pharmacies. This is gonna go a long way to helping folks save money on their prescriptions. We all know that the prescription Costs are just through the roof. They're, they're out of control. Passing the bill as it came out of committee is one way for us to help make a difference in prescription drug costs in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I hope we will not adopt the, the uh, substitute. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Do any other senators wish to be heard regarding the floor amendments? Seeing none, the question is, shall the floor amendments be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, No. The no's have it. The floor amendments are not adopted. Mr. Senator for Roanoke City, yeah. Senator Edwards. Mr. President, I move that the bill be engrossed and uh, passed to its third reading. Thank the Senator. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 404. A bill relating to health insurance short-term limited duration medical plans. Reported from the Committee on Commerce and Labor with amendments. The junior senator from Chesterfield, Senator Hashmi. Mr. President, I ask that we pass the bill by for a day as we continue to work on amendments. Thanks, Senator. Without objection, Senate Bill 404 will go by for the day. Senate Bill 65. A bill relating to voter identification repeal of photo identification requirements. Reported from the Committee on Privileges and Elections with a substitute, and there is a floor substitute. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Saravell. Thank you, Mr. President. I would ask that the committee substitute go by temporarily so we can get to the floor substitute. No. no. So we don't do that here. So uh, I guess you can reject. Okay, Mr. President, then with the recommendation that we reject it, I would move that we accept the committee substitute. Uh, the question is, with the recommendation that it be rejected, shall the committee substitute be adopted all? In favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. No. <laughs> the no's have it. The committee substitute is rejected. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Servell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move Building that we waive reading of the floor substitute. The question is, shall the reading of the floor substitute be waived? All in favor of the motion will say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The reading of the floor substitute is waived. Senator from Eastern Fairfax, Senator Surveil. Thank you, Mr. President. Didn't know so many people wanted to read the floor substitute, but I would now move the floor substitute pass and speaking to that motion. Senator, is the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, this bill is the uh, bill that repeals the voter ID requirements that were enacted in 2014 and 2012, the work of um, the Senator from Rockingham mostly, and also Delegate Cole. Uh, for those of you who remember, in 2014, uh, we passed, or the General Assembly passed legislation saying that you could not vote unless you could present valid government-issued photo identification. Um, in 2012, the General Assembly repealed the provision by which if you showed up without ID, you could vote by signing a statement under penalty of felony that you were the person who you said you were. The floor substitute, or sorry, the committee substitute you had took the law back to 2014. This floor substitute takes it back to before 2012. And so with this floor substitute, the law would go back to 2012 where you still have to show an ID to vote. When you come, you have to show an ID. And if you don't have an ID, you don't have any ID, then you can sign the statement under penalty of felony that you are who you say you are, which is the system we had for a long time, which worked fine. And having said that, Madam President, I again renew my motion that the floor substitute pass. The question is, shall the floor substitute pass? Madam President. 
The senator from Rockingham, Senator Obergein. I, I will only briefly rise to say I hope we do not pass this uh, floor substitute and also to point out that uh, I, I get uh, too much credit in that the former senator from Chesterfield, Senator Martin, led the charge on this for a long time. So I certainly want to stand up and protect Steve Martin's hard work. The question is, the question is, shall a floor substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. 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 Those have the same right? Aye. The ayes have it. This floor substitute is agreed to. Senator Locke. Senator from Hampton, Senator Locke. I move that the bill, Senate Bill 65 be engrossed in advance to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed in advance to its third reading? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. No saying right. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed in advance to its third reading. Senate Bill 28, a bill relating to eminent domain cost. Reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with amendments. The Senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Serval. I'm sorry, Senator from Fairfax City, Senator Peterson. Thank you. Do I look alike? Uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Madam President. I move the committee amendments. The question is shall the committee amendment be agreed to? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Ayes have it. Committee amendment is agreed to. The senator from Fairfax City, Senator Peterson. Thank you, Madam President. I move the bill be engrossed and passed on to the third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 140. A bill relating to the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, public institutions of higher education, information related to pledges and donations. Reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology with amendment. The Senator from King George, Senator Stewart. Thank you, Madam President. I move the amendment be adopted. The question is, shall the committee amendment to Senate Bill 140 be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is... It, it, it engrossed in advance to third reading. Uh, that was just the amendment. The Senator from King George. Senator Thank you, Madam Stewart. President. I'd move the bill be engrossed in advance to its third reading. The question is, shall Senate Bill 140 be engrossed in advance to its third reading? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The ayes have it, sir. The bill is engrossed in advance to its third reading. Senate Bill 171. A bill relating to school resource officers and school security officers training standards. The Reported Senate, from the Committee on Education and Health with amendment. The Senator from Hampton, Senator Locke. I move that the committee amendment be adopted. The question is, shall the committee amendment to Senate Bill 171 be adopted? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. No, those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and uh, has been committee amendment. Senator Locke, <laughs> Senator from Hampton. I move that the bill be engrossed in advance to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed in advance to its third reading? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. No, same right. Ayes have it. The bill is engrossed in advance to its third reading. Senate Bill 208, a bill relating to mechanics liens, right to withhold payment. Reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Fairfax, Senator Peterson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the bill be engrossed and passed on to third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 251, a bill relating to deeds of trust, fiduciary duties, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary with a substitute. The Senator from Shafe, no, the Senator from Ruffin, Senator Chafin. May this go by for the day. Without objection, the bill will go by for the day. Senate Bill 270, a bill relating to practice of pharmacy compounding regulation by Board of Pharmacy, reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. 
The Senator from Loudoun, Senator Bell. Thank you, Madam President. I move the committee substitute. The question is, shall the committee of substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 270 has been agreed to. The substitute has been agreed to. Senator Bell. Thank you, Madam President. I move the bill be engrossed and passed on to its third reading. The question is, shall Senate Bill 270 be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced. Senate Bill 294, a bill relating to bail bondsmen, petition for return of deposit for surrender of principal, deposited funds credited to literary fund. Reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Western Fairfax County, Senator Marston. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the bill be engrossed and passed on to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced on to its third reading? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced. Senate Bill 406. A bill relating to the Virginia Environmental Justice Act, reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology, with a substitute. The junior senator from Chesterfield, Senator Hashmi. Madam President, I move the substitute. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor say aye. No, same right. Ayes have it. The committee substitute is agreed to. Senator from, junior senator from Chesterfield, Senator Hashmi. I move that the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. No opposed. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 420, a bill relating to public schools, seizure treatment, and training. Reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. The, se the senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator DeStef. Move the committee substitute. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. Noes opposed. Ayes have it. The committee substitute is agreed to. The senator from senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator DeStef. Move the engrossment and advancement to third constitutional reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Those opposed, no. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 422, a bill relating to health regulatory boards, reported from the Committee on Education and Health. The senator from Fairfax City, Senator Peterson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the bill be engrossed and passed along to third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and passed on to its third reading? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Those opposed, no. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 429, a bill relating to withholding of income for child support independent contracts. The Senator reported to the, from the Committee on the Judiciary with amendment. I am so sorry, Madam Kerlick. I'm in too big a hurry. The Senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Sarovo. Thank you, Madam President. I uh, move the bill, I move the committee amendments. The question is, shall the committee amendments be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The committee amendments are agreed to. The senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Sir. Thank you, Madam President. I <laughs> move the bill be advanced, like gross and gross and advanced to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 429 is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 491, a bill relating to inquiry and report of immigration status, persons charged with or convicted of certain crimes, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Searle. Thank you, Madam President. I move this bill go by for the day. Without objection, Senate Bill 491 will go by for the day. Senate Bill 492, a bill relating to sex offenses requiring registration, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Searle. Thank you, Madam President. I move the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading. 
The question is, shall the bill be engrossed in advance to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The bill is engrossed in advance to its third reading. Senate Bill 571, a bill relating to visitation petition of grandparent of deceased parent. The Senator from Reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Himrico, Senator Donovan. Thank you, Madam President. Can that bill go by for the day? Without objection, the bill shall go by for the day. Senate Bill 645, a bill relating to local arbitration agreements reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology with a substitute. The Senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Searle. Thank you, Madam President. I move the committee substitute. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The committee substitute is agreed to. The senator from Eastern Fairfax County, Senator Zerobel. Move the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 693. A bill relating to common law defense, defense of intrafamily immunity abolished in certain cases. Reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Rockingham, Senator Alban Chain. Right. Madam President, I move that the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 693 is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 697, a bill relating to execution of will witnesses, reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. Senator Alwyn Shane, the Senator from Rockingham. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 697 is engrossed and advanced. Senate Bill 700. A bill relating to indexing of wills reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Rockingham, Senator Obenchain. Madam President, I move that the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 700 is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 708. A bill relating to housing, housing authorities, notice of intent to demolish, liquidate, or, or otherwise dispose of housing projects. Reported the, from the Committee on General Laws and Technology with amendments. The senior senator from Richmond City, Senator McClellan. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the committee amendment be adopted. The question is, shall the committee amendment be adopted? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 708, the committee amendment is adopted. The senator from, senior senator from Richmond City, Senator McClellan. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Madam President. I move that Senate Bill 708 be engrossed and passed to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 708 is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 713, a bill relating to Board of Counseling, Licensure, Professional Art Therapists, and Professional Art Therapists Associates. Reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. The Senior Senator from Richmond City, Senator McClellan. Thank you, Madam President. I move the committee substitute be adopted. The question is, shall the, shall, shall the committee substitute be adopted? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 713, this committee substitute is adopted. The Senator from Richmond City, Senior Senator from Richmond City, Senator McClellan. Thank you, Madam President. I move that Senate Bill 713 be engrossed and passed to its third reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 845, a bill relating to local school boards and mold testing parental notification. Reported from the Committee on Education and Health with a substitute. The Senator from Alexandria, Senator Eben. Thank you, Madam President. I uh, move the um, committee substitute. The question is, shall the committee substitute be agreed to? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. 
The committee substitutes agree to. The senator from Alexandria, Senator uh, Evans. I move that uh, Senate Bill 845 be engrossed and advanced to its third reading. The question is, shall Senate Bill 845 be engrossed and advanced to its third reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 868, a bill relating to prohibited discrimination, public accommodations, employment, housing, and credit, Causes of Action, Sexual Orientation, and Gender Identity. Reported from the Committee on General Laws and Technology with a substitute. The Senator from Alexandria, Senator Eben. Uh, Madam President, could that go by for the day? Without objection, the bill shall go by for the day. Senate Bill 920, a bill relating to surrogacy, contracts, provisions requiring abortions, or selective reductions unenforceable. Reported Senator from the Committee on the Judiciary with amendments. The Senator from Lynchburg, Senator Peek. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the committee amendments be agreed to. The question is, shall the committee amendments be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The committee amendments are agreed to. Then, Madam President, I move Senator from Lynchburg, Senator Peek. I move that the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third constitutional reading. The question is... Shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third constitutional reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third reading. Senate Bill 926, a bill relating to fingerprints and photographs by police authorities, reports to the Central Criminal Records Exchange. Reported from the Committee on the Judiciary. The Senator from Lynchburg, Senator Peake. Yes, ma'am, Madam President, I move that the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third constitutional reading. The question is, shall the bill be engrossed and advanced to its third constitutional reading? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is engrossed and advanced to its third constitutional reading. Uncontested calendar, Senate bills on first reading. Senior Senator for She's waiting for something. I don't have a book. The real Lieutenant Governor took the book with him. <laughs> oh, boy. I've been winging it. Did a good job. Good fool me. The senior senator from Fairfax County, Senator Saslaw. Madam President, uh, I move that all Senate bills on the first reading on the uncontested and regular calendar, that's pages 43 through 57, that's Senate Bill 77 through Senate Bill 1035, that's 1035, that the rules be suspended and the first constitutional readings of the titles be dispensed with. The question is, shall the rules be suspended and the first reading of the titles of Senate bills on the uncontested and regular calendar Pages 43 through 57, Senate Bill 77 through Senate Bill 1035 be dispensed with. All in favor of the motion will record their votes aye and those opposed no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all senators voted? Do any senator desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 40, no zero. Ayes 40, no zero. The reading is dispensed with. The constitutional reading is dispensed with. The question is, shall... Oh, I forgot about you. Um, the senior senator from Fairfax County, Senator Fab, Senator Sadlaw. I now move, uh, Madam President, that those said bills go by for the day. I'm trying to compose this. The question is, shall the Senate bills on the uncontested and regular calendar, now on the second reading, be passed by for the day? 
All in favor of the request of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Well, the ayes have it. The bills will go by for the day. Uncontested calendar. Senate joint resolutions on first reading. The senator from, senior senator from Fairfax County, Senator Saslaw. Uh, Madam President, I move that all Senate joint resolutions on the first reading on the uncontested calendar, that's pages 57 and 58, that Senate, uh, that Senate joint resolution 35 through 81, that the rules be suspended and the first constitutional reading of the titles be dispensed with. The question is, shall the rules be suspended and the first reading of the titles of the Senate joint resolutions on the uncontested calendar, pages 57 through 58, Senate joint resolution 35 through Senate joint resolution 81, be waived. All in favor of the motion will record their votes aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all senators voted? Do any senator desire to change their vote? The clerk will close the roll. Eyes 40, no zero. Eyes 40, no zero. The reading has been waived in the block. The senior senator from Fairfax County, Senator Saslaw. I now move that those said Senate joint resolutions go by for the day. The question is, shall the Senate joint resolutions on the uncontested and regular calendars now on second reading be passed by for the day? All in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The bills will be passed by for the day. The senior senator from Fairfax County, Senator Saslaw. Madam President, I require the clerk to complete the calendar for today. Yes, sir. We do have one Senate resolution to take up. Madam President. The Senator from Prince William, Senator McPike. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the rules be suspended and Senate Resolution number 17 at the end of the calendar be taken up for immediate consideration. The question is, shall the rules be suspended and Senate Joint Resolution 17 be taken up for immediate consideration? All in favor of that motion will record their votes aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all senators voted? Do any senator desire to change their votes? The clerk will close the roll. Eyes 40, no zero. Eyes 40, no zero. S Senate Resolution number 17, commending James McAllister. The Senator from Prince William, Senator McPike. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the resolution be agreed to. The question is, shall the resolution be agreed to? All in favor of the motion will, will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Ayes have it. SGR 17 is agreed to. The Senator from... Senior Senator from Fairfax County, Senator Saslaw. Senior Senator from Richmond City, Senator McClellan. Thank you, Madam President. I rise for a point of personal privilege. The Senator has the floor. Um, thank you, Madam President. As we begin Black History Month, um, I wanted to note that 150 years ago today, with Iowa's ratification of the 15th Amendment, it became ratified and part of our Constitution, provide, forbidding the denial of U.S. citizens' rights to vote on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. The prior year, Virginia ratified both the 15th and the 14th Amendment, and in 1867, the first African American men voted in Virginia. Approximately over 105,000 registered to vote, and 93,145 voted for delegates to create a new constitution that would allow Virginia to be readmitted to the Union. 24 of the delegates to that convention were African American men. After that, convention, after that convention and that constitution were adopted in 1869, 24 African American men were elected to the House of Delegates and six were elected to the Senate. 
Very briefly, I want to tell you who those six of our colleagues were. James William D. Bland, who was a carpenter, a cooper, and a U.S. tax assessor, was born free in Farmville in 1844. He served in 1867 and was one of 60 persons killed on the second floor of the Capitol when the floor collapsed. Isaiah Lyons, a native of New York, who came to Virginia before the Civil War, died while serving in office in 1871. And after his death, the Virginia General Assembly awarded his wife $52 to cover funeral expenses. William P. Mosley, a slave born in 1819, was a house servant and operated a freight boat. He obtained his freedom before the Civil War and represented Goochland County in the Constitutional Convention and in the Senate. He ran for Congress as a Republican in 1880, but was defeated by the Readjuster Party. Francis Frank Moss was a farmer and minister born free in 1825 in Buckingham County. He served in the Constitutional Convention in the House of Delegates representing Buckingham and in the Senate from 1869 to 1871. John Robinson was born in 1822, a lawyer and graduate of Hampton Institute. He represented Cumberland County in the convention and in the Senate until 1873. He worked as a mail carrier, operated a saloon and a general store in the 1870s. And George Timo, a carpenter born a slave in Portsmouth in 1818. An accomplished orator, he was a delegate to the Virginia Black Convention of 1865 and was a Union League organizer. He served in the Constitutional Convention, but generally remained silent. He served in the Senate from 1869 to 1871, and due to party factionalism, was, was denied renomination to the Senate, but ran unsuccessfully for the House of Delegates. Unfortunately, these six individuals and their 24 colleagues down the hall were lost to history until another one of our colleagues, Senator Yvonne Miller, wanting to do a speech on Black History Month, asked Brenda Edwards in Legislative Services to research who the first African Americans were to serve in this body. Thanks to that question and Brenda Edwards' tireless research, we were able to pass a resolution in 2012, recognizing all of the African-American men who served during Reconstruction and in the Constitutional Convention, and their plaques listing all of their names downstairs. Unfortunately, we don't always teach our history in school, but through the tireless efforts of those individuals who keep their stories alive, we can get it right and recognize them officially as we have done and as I hope we continue to do for the rest of this month. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank the Senator. For what purpose does the senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Steph, rise? Mr. President, I rise for a point of personal privilege. Senator has the floor. Mr. President, let's roll back 50 years. 50 years ago, the Kansas City Chiefs beat the, beat the Minnesota Vikings, 1970. They beat them 20, 23 to 7. 50 years later, yesterday, the Kansas City Chiefs beat San Francisco 49ers 31 to 20. I've worn this tie almost every Monday. It's a Kansas City Chiefs tie. Very proud of that tie. Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs did a fantastic job yesterday, Mr. President. I just wanted to bring that to the attention of everybody in this body and wanted to uh, pass on to the uh, senator from Chesapeake that, yes, it is a Kansas City Chiefs Day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank the senator. Do any other senators wish to be recognized? Is there any other business to come before the Senate? Seeing none, the clerk will make any announcements on the desk. Today, Monday, February 3rd, the Committee on Commerce and Labor will meet 15 minutes after adjournment in Senate Room A, Pocahontas. The Education and Health Subcommittee on Higher Education will meet one half hour after adjournment, Senate Subcommittee Room 2, 5th Floor, Pocahontas. Senators Locke, Peterson, Cosgrove, Chafin, and Hashmi. 
The Finance and Appropriations Subcommittee on Health and Human Resources will meet at 4 p.m. Senate Subcommittee Room 1, 5th Floor, Pocahontas, Senators Howe, Hanger, Vogel, Barker, Deeds, Eben, and McClellan. The Judiciary Subcommittee on Civil Law will meet at 4 p.m. Senate Subcommittee Room 3, 5th Floor, Pocahontas, Senators Peterson, Lucas, Norman, Obenshane, Chafin, McClellan, and Voisco. The Northern Virginia Delegation will meet at 5 p.m. Senate Leadership Conference Room, 6th Floor, Pocahontas. Tomorrow, Tuesday, February 4th, the Finance and Appropriations Subcommittee on Economic Development and Natural Resources will meet at 7.30 a.m. Senate Subcommittee Room 1, 5th Floor, Pocahontas, Senators Marsden, Ruff, Howell, Saslaw, Hanger, and Barker. The Finance and Appropriations Subcommittee on General Government will meet at 7.30 a.m. Senate Leadership Conference Room, 6th Floor, Pocahontas, Senators Peterson, Newman, Lucas, Bogle, Locke, and Eben. The General Laws and Technology Subcommittee on Gaming will meet at 8 a.m. Senate Room A, Pocahontas, Senators McPike, Eben, Mason, Boisco, Bell, Ruff, Donovan, Pellion, and Kiggins. The Committee on Finance and Appropriations will meet at 9 a.m. Committee Room B, Pocahontas. The Rehabilitation and Social Services Subcommittee on ABC will not meet. This is a schedule change. Rehab and Social Services Subcommittee on ABC will not meet. The Democratic Caucus will meet at 11.30 a.m. Senate Room 1, Capitol. The Republican Caucus will meet at 11.30 a.m. in Senate Room 2, Capitol. Thank you, Madam Clerk. What purpose is Senator from Roanoke City? Senator Edwards, rise. Mr. President, I'd like to advise the clerk and the body that there's been a change in the membership of the Civil Law Subcommittee. Instead of Senator McClellan, it would be Senator Serval. Senator McClellan is now a member of the Criminal Law Subcommittee of the Judiciary Committee. Thank you, Senator. For what purpose is Senator from James City County? Senator Norman, rise. Do any other senators wish to be recognized? Seeing none, call a senator from Portsmouth, Senator Lucas. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate do now adjourn and that we do so until 12 noon tomorrow. Thank you, Senator. The question is, shall the Senate stand adjourn until 12 noon tomorrow? All in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The Senate stands adjourned until 12 noon tomorrow.